Hello and welcome to another edition of the Stench of Truth here. Um, we certainly had a very interesting week, uh, a little recap. Uh, certainly we had uh, uh, a fantastic story coming out of Ohio in the release of uh, three kidnapped uh, women that were being held in Cleveland. And of course the 15 minutes of fame of the, uh, of the black gentleman who, uh, who was all over the news. Uh, talking about his part in the rescue of these women. Uh, certainly a very uh, horrific ordeal that they went through, but uh, happy for the family and for the people involved that they were released. Um, certainly uh, Benghazi hearings continuing within the uh, Congress and the usual same uh, political nonsense happening everywhere else. Um, one thing of note, uh, it's very important I think, is that Elizabeth Warren who has uh, been a very visible confronting the uh, Federal Reserve and the various other uh, agencies of the federal government that oversaw the mortgage foreclosure settlements that uh, were the big fucking joke as I noted earlier uh, where uh, people had their entire house taken away from them and they get a measly 500 fucking dollars and that's supposed to be a uh, equitable settlement to the biggest fucking financial fraud in the history of the fucking universe uh, that is the ongoing scandal of Wall Street fucking theft and uh, thievery so um, she's been on that case and now she has uh, broached a subject that no one within the mainstream has yet broken and that is to force the Federal Reserve to use its credit creation powers to uh, buy up and lower the interest rates on student debt and that would of course alleviate a massive amount of debt within the country and uh, this is the first time to my knowledge that any elected official has attempted to put a bill into Congress that would make the Federal Reserve be the uh, avenue by which uh, economic gains can be had to other than banking institutions. Of course the Federal Reserve is well known by most of you as being the propitiator of trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars to bankrupt and failing uh, banks and financial institutions in a desperate effort to try to keep these totally bankrupt fucking behemoths afloat so that they don't crash everything around them when they fall because they're so fucking big they go up into the stratosphere and let us not forget that uh, that is only to keep them afloat they can't do anything with that money except sit on it and of course all of those trillions of dollars that could be used for the benefit of people of the United States is merely being parked it's being parked back at the Federal Reserve so that they can actually earn interest on the free money that they get from the Fed and uh, this of course is a great thing because ultimately what we would like to see is we would like to see the Federal Reserve being used to buy municipal and state bonds to fund infrastructure repair uh, projects etc 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 what we would like to do is force the Federal Reserve to actually fund the things that are needed in this country instead of having everything have to be on budget and of course doing it through the Federal Reserve there is absolutely no way that anybody can fucking argue that somehow this is going to be negative to the debt or deficit or anything like that because it would be completely off the fucking books so I think that is an absolutely fantastic thing and of course uh, opening up in the people's eyes the idea of the Federal Reserve and exactly what it does and its relationship to the government and how using it can solve the vast majority of the problems that we face within this country including unemployment, homelessness and jobs that uh, pay well and of course uh, infrastructure repair uh, you name it. Uh, the Federal Reserve can be forced to do these things. All it requires is a change to the law. 
at this point in time, the Federal Reserve cannot buy uh, local municipality or state bonds, but a uh, simple change of the law would require them to do so. And I would go as far as to say that the Federal Reserve would be required to buy the fucking bonds, not just that they would be able to do so. No, I would make it so they have to buy them. And that way they would be forced to fund things that benefit citizens of the United States and uh, the people that are living here in the country. <clears throat> we still see a, an incredible amount of distractionary activity going on uh, with uh, the focus on the Benghazi hearings, which of course is an important issue. And I think that uh, uh, what we saw in Boston is part of a larger geopolitical strategy within the government and uh, agencies uh, connected to it, both uh, federal and private. Uh, in a geopolitical sense that is moving in some new direction for some new plan. Uh, I do not yet see the end game of that particular scenario, but you can bet that everything is being used and directed for the purposes of some further uh, shenanigans down the road because this is simply the um, uh, modus operandi of this current administration. So USA Incorporated can continue its buzz cutting and murder, rape, rampage, and pillage all across the world in a desperate effort to scrape up the last bit of resources anywhere, shovel it all into the giant maw of the hugely rich and the insanely uh, um, high stratosphere 0.1 percent of the population, uh, multi-mega billionaires who have uh, raked up all of the property that anybody ever owned anywhere uh, and it has proceeded apace for the past several decades. So we do see some positive signs. We see some things to make us think that perhaps society has not uh, devolved into uh, a complete farce of itself uh, like an Ouroboros eating its own tail. But of course that continues to be the major trend of uh, society eating itself from its own inability to grasp anything deeper than dancing with the stars and any other number of uh, stupid and banal reality shows. Uh, so one has to then also look at the downside of the positives. Uh, we have the market going up through the roof and this is only through the efforts of um, uh, the plunge protection team and finance capital. This is this, in fact, is probably the greatest uh, example of how finance capital actually does make the rules within this country and decide exactly what is going to happen anywhere at any time and actually control the economy to a certain extent. And that, of course, is uh, that finance capital is in everything uh, derivative out of the stock market. So uh, there is a constant flow of money around to all of these exotic transactions, which uh, inevitably drives up the stock market into a huge bubble. And, of course, the stock market historically has been uh, the the gauge by which we judge how economic activity happens within this country. But, of course, this has been completely askewed now. Uh, so that the market is completely separate from the reality of the uh, economy in general. But people don't know this. So when they see that the, that the Dow is up over 15,000, they think, oh, things must be, must be going pretty good because historically that would have been true. But now the stock market is completely separate from the idea of economic stability and economic growth. And uh, in fact, uh, the stock market itself is a giant bubble. And of course, uh, at some point in time, all of those derivatives and exotic transactions and uh, you know various different kinds of weird paper products that they're cr creating up there are eventually going to fail and this is all going to come tumbling down again. Uh, there's an alleged uh, uh, rebound in the housing sector, but that's fake as well because we have banks and other uh, investment companies buying up foreclosed homes, renting them out, or uh, flipping them, or just holding on to the stock until everything goes away. So people are buying homes, but it's not families who have money because there are not, no families that have money.
Uh, I would recommend also Paul Craig Roberts uh, article in Counterpunch about the uh, April jobs number and how uh, through a very simple analysis of the job numbers and where the jobs were supposedly created one can totally debunk the uh, jobs numbers that were put out by the federal government and this is already the fucking tinkered numbers this is not even the you know the u6 or any of the other uh, methods by which you can get a more accurate ref reflection this is already the tinkered numbers the tinkered numbers that they have given us uh, are no longer tinkered they are flat out falsehoods that <laughs> they have gone to the point of completely making shit up and if you read that article by Paul Craig Roberts, you can see it uh, laid out in very simple terms. And, of course, all of the points that he makes are entirely valid. So there, there are still a lot of problems. And I think that uh, as time goes on, I believe that people will start to grasp the idea that uh, the reality that we live in is one big uh, fucking joke, basically. Uh, more people are getting on board this idea. Um, there are, of course, those who continue down into the fantasy land realm of ridiculousness and lunacy, and I feel a lot of those people are out of touch and not capable to be uh, saved, uh, at least on this particular problem. So uh, focus on the good things, I say. Uh, I mean, we really have to take a stand somewhere and just to try to decide to do something that's going to be beneficial for people. And I think that we could throw support behind Elizabeth Warren's attempt to get the Federal Reserve to take over student loans, reduce the interest rate owned on them, and uh, furthermore try to pry uh, some legislation to get the Federal Reserve active in trying to do something beneficial for the country in general. We've already seen that the austerity goal are completely wrong because the uh, Reinhardt Rogoff study has been proven to be uh, false. Uh, that was the underpinning of much of the austerity program. We're starting to see some, some glimmer of hope from a few European countries to try to turn the clock back on austerity, and hopefully that will continue into the future. Uh, for the rest of the people who continue to believe in this ideology of, of, um, uh, you know, underneath uh, Obama that somehow, you know, are still holding out hope in him or maybe some of you right wing crackpots out there who, uh, you know, want to abolish the Federal Reserve and do all kinds of ridiculous lunacy uh, and go back to uh, neo-Confederate uh, serfdom and uh, giant plantations where you can have a bunch of uh, uh, people basically uh, slaving away for you for nothing uh, in uh, free market capitalism. <clears throat> There's a great clash coming, I think. Uh, people are, you know, starting to question the reality of what kind of economic systems are are going to be the ones that we need uh, and have to have for the future of this company, or, well, company is actually true, uh, but uh, technically also a country um, of USA Incorporated going forward. And I think those kind of uh, 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 talks are going to be uh, beneficial in the long run because we need to call into question everything and uh, my particular take on it is that we need to take the best of every system that we find and try to incorporate them into one that will be the most beneficial for all of the people um, who live in this country and not just for the 0.1 percent who have raked in everything over the last uh, 40 years uh, while everybody else has suffered uh, joblessness homelessness and uh, even now, having Obama um, come out against uh, uh, Social Security and his continued chopping away of Medicare and other social safety net programs uh, for the benefit of the rich in Wall Street. And uh, this can only be a good trend if it continues into the future, and hopefully it will. So uh, that's all I have for today. Have a nice day, and thank you for watching.